Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Erin. And today we're talking about how you can display whiskey in your home. And we're speaking out in defense of one of the less popular options. And then we're through the front. The do, 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 Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. Today we're talking about displaying whiskey in your home. Our favorite option, which we think is maybe one of the least popular options out there. Potentially. But before we get into that, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I took a nap today, yeah. which I like to do most Sundays if possible. Yeah. And uh, so I'm feeling good, ready to go, ready to film. I'm in it. <laughs> okay. How about you? <laughs> Wow, naps really get, naps. Her, get her excited. I love naps. Yeah, I had a nap too, shorter than yours. Yeah, but I As had it. Yeah, it's a good day. It's this is being filmed on the kickoff of the regular NFL season. We're in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm. The Titans lost very badly to the Arizona Cardinals today, so that's not going my way. But we've got our September live stream tonight, and I'm really looking forward to that. So pumped. I'm also looking forward to this episode a yeah. lot. So before we get into our main topic, we're going to do a little quick review yep. on Russell's Reserve 10-year. Okay. Now, this is 90 proof, 10 years old, obviously age stated. We're both big Wild Turkey fans. Mm -hmm. We love everything that they have to offer for the most part. This is a product that I've had several times. I don't know if you've ever had this or I not. Typically, this floats around $34 to $38 in okay. our market. However, we got this bottle for $25.89. How did we manage that? We just went into the one of the local stores. It was on sale cool. and we grabbed it up. So if you can get this for that price, I mean, we think it's good, but let's find out. All let's right. get into the nose. Oh, mm, that's nice. It smells like bourbon. Yeah, it's like really classic, classic bourbon. It's kind of syrupy on the nose though. Mm -hmm. Like it smells like it's gonna be thick. And I like that. I bet it won't be though. That's my prediction. At 90 proof, it, it won't have a ton of oomph, but with the age, you get some depth of flavor. Mm. Or you should, but yeah. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, it's just that classic bourbon nose, a little bit of caramel, vanilla, and there's a little wild turkey signature note on there. Yeah, there's flavor, but it's kind of like bright. Like on the top? Yep. Like it hits the top of yeah. the mouth kind of bright. Yeah, it really swells up with flavor. Mm. You get that cinnamon Ooh. spice. It's like really sweet on the back. Yeah. Yeah, it keeps going. You get that sweet oak. To me, as far as 10 year age dated bourbons go, mm. at lower proof, this is my favorite. Yeah. A lot of people really like Eagle Rare, but I've always, I say always, but actually I didn't really know I liked wild turkey products because I didn't give them the time of day for a long time. Yeah. And then when I started trying them, especially in blinds, I realized how much I actually did enjoy them. This was and better so than I expected it to be. After trying this, I mean, for 26 bucks for yeah. this bottle, that's outstanding. Readily available everywhere. Like I said, typically 35 bucks in our market. Okay. But where are you at on the thumb system? Are you <sighs> readily available? 30 bucks, give or take four dollars so i'm starting to get more lenient with my thumbs so, so you got loose thumbs i got loose thumbs lately and i feel like like i want to give it two thumbs up because i was surprised it's inexpensive i expected it to be like meh yeah. and i i kind of like it so i'm i'm gonna give it two thumbs up yeah really available good price good flavor good experience all the things yeah i think for me it's kind of right in between thumbs up or two thumbs up I tend to prefer more proof, mm -hmm. but at this lower proof point, you usually don't get this much flavor. Yeah, and so, I think that's what I was expecting, yeah. like the lower flavor. In that regard, I think it's a really great product. It's got to be a two thumbs up yeah. for me at the end of the day, just because I like the flavor so much, it's packing so much, you get an age statement, if that matters to you, it's just a great product. You really can't, you really can't beat it. All right, let's get into our main topic now. How to display bourbon and whiskey in your home. All right. Don't want to bury the lead here, but yep. our favorite option is a bar cart. 
We love a good bar cart. I think a bar cart looks so classy. Yeah. And that's just my opinion. Yeah. And you can look all over YouTube or anywhere on the internet and you can see awesome home bar rooms. You can see shelving, Shelf. you can see display cabinets, you can see all kinds of stuff. And that's certainly awesome if you have the space for it, mm -hmm. if you have the, you know, the collection for it, mm -hmm. however you want to do it. But for us, a bar cart in our home is the perfect solution because yeah. it's compact, it stores whatever bottles you want to display. And then check this out. A lot of people kind of poo poo on the bar cart, I feel like. Yeah. Not literally, but you know, they, <laughs> that would be weird. That would be gross but and weird. Figuratively, a lot, I think a lot of people just kind of bypass it. Yeah. But if you don't have a ton of space, maybe you're living in an apartment or a home that just doesn't have a spare room. Yeah. I think it's such a great option. Think about when you go to the liquor store and you're looking at the stuff on the shelf and you know, maybe you ask the clerk or the spirits manager and yeah. you're like, Hey, I see you've had this, like, what about this? And they're like, hold on a second, let me go to the back. Mm. And they come out with something amazing. As much as we like to fight against FOMO, that is a cool experience when somebody goes and gets something for you and brings it out and so, it's unexpected. So you're saying you, because of the bar cart's smaller, you don't have the ability to display everything. everything and so yeah. you have a few things in the back. Right, and so what we have on our bar cart, which you've seen some B-roll of at this point, is we have some bottles out that we like to enjoy mm -hmm. or like to show off or share with guests mm -hmm. or whatever. Not necessarily show off, that's not the right word. We just like the way the bottles just look. Just display. You know how it they're is. Pretty. Yeah. They're pretty. They look pretty and they're, they look pretty yeah, when they're, they're out. They're like pieces of art. Yeah. You know, so we have those on display. And inevitably, if we have people over, if they're milling around our house, they see the bar cart over there in the corner, and if they gravitate over there towards it, it's the intro to a conversation rather than having a whole whiskey room, which, which would be cool. Which would be the conversation starter, no matter if you like whiskey or not, just because that's so right. such a, a, a statement. Right. So for us, it's we're a little more like on the sly, like, are they gonna go towards the bar cart? Yeah. If they are, we'll have a conversation. If they're not, then we'll just continue, you know, eating the food in our kitchen or whatever. We're right. Doing. And then they gravitate over there and they start looking at the stuff. And then that's a that's an intro to be like, oh, are you into whiskey? Mm -hmm. Are you into bourbon? What do you normally like? Mm -hmm. And then what I get to do, and I love doing this with people that come over, if they're looking through stuff and I start asking them what they like, what they normally drink, then I'm able to say, okay. Like, have you tried this off the bar cart? Maybe they're gravitating towards something, you grab that for them, or you say, what do you, you know, what's one of your favorite pours that you've ever had? Yeah. And then you either, oh, you can open up the cabinet. We have a little cabinet next to the bar cart that we keep Tupperware and whatever else mm -hmm. in, but we also keep some extra bottles in there and that's the good stuff. Mm -hmm. And we open that up and I'm able to pull something out or I go to the back room where we have a little shelving system inside Basically, of a closet. Josh's closet. Yeah, <laughs> in our office and so, we have it there yeah. and I'm able to bring something from the back and it just creates such a cool, unique experience. Yeah, it's fun. That I think is really fun for guests in a different way, not a better or worse way just than different. having like a cool whiskey room or a bar, a home bar. But yeah, bar carts can go a long way. Ours I think is from Crate and Barrel or one of those three or four stores might that even, might as well be named Crate and Barrel. Yeah, or it might even be from Wayfair. It could be. You can easily find one on Wayfair for fairly inexpensive. Yeah. You know, you can you can find all kinds of different bar carts, classy, you know, more rustic mm -hmm. bar style, different whatever styles, you different want. Different aesthetics that fit with the vibe yeah. of your home or wherever your the bar cart is. Right, and it's not intrusive into your decor. Like mm -hmm. ours is over in the corner of our dining area, mm -hmm. our kitchen dining area. That's it's like right over there. You can probably see it right over Aaron's shoulder. It's probably too dark, but it's, it's back there. It's back there. Yeah. The other thing too, guys, look here. If you're buying bottles and you're constantly putting them on the shelves and your significant other is seeing the bottles pile up on the shelves. They're going to know how much money. Exactly. You're but if you have a bar cart and then you have whiskey put away let's elsewhere. Not, let's not advocate for secret spending. If Well, no, not secret spending, but if you, it's out of sight, out of mind. So like <laughs> oh. as the bottles pile up, they can be kept in the other room. They can mm. be kept in the garage. They can be kept wherever you need to keep them. And then it's not constantly piling up and expanding visually. Visual so expansion. this is big brain yeah. thinking, yeah. guys. Yeah. Okay, just trying to help y'all out here. <laughs> the other thing, though, I want to say before we move on to other stuff okay. is that it doesn't take long looking online and and seeing communities to where somebody puts in some floating shelves or mm. they buy a cabinet with glass shelving 
or wooden shelves that have a long expanse mm -hmm. on them. And a lot of people don't think about the weight of a lot of glass a lot bottles of glass full bottles. of liquid. These stacked up next to each other weigh a lot. Yeah. Once you, you put 15 of these on a glass shelf mm -hmm. and like you can see people will post their home bar setups and you can see wooden shelves sagging or you see somebody's glass shelf broke and then they've got tons of broken Just, bottles yeah. or a floating shelf collapsed because it wasn't anchored into studs. So if you are going to go that route, just make sure that you do your due diligence. Secure. You know, this is like a cautionary <laughs> tale. Yeah. Like if, it's, it seems obvious, but I don't think we've never gone down that route, Yeah. but you just really don't think about the weight sometimes. So watch out for that. Secure the shelves, put them in studs, yeah. anchor them properly. Right. Make sure that everything you're doing is safe to keep yeah. your bottle safe and your family safe. Yeah. If things, you know, fall on children. Okay, yeah. Bad. As a wise prophet once said, check yourself Before lest you wreck yourself. yourself. Lest you I think he said lest, lest. And I think it got adapted to check yourself yeah, before you yeah. wreck yourself. But like old talk was yeah. lest. Lest you wreck so, yourself. Yeah. I agree. All right. Let's get into other stuff. <laughs> this week on other stuff, it's been a while since we've talked watches. And to you, it seems like it's been a while. To me, it doesn't seem like it's been a while. <laughs> well, you like watches too. You're kind of like the National Watch Club. You like to go to the meetups. You like the community. I like the community. Is what you like. Yeah. I like the people. Yeah. yeah. But it's been a, a tall task starting this channel. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since I've bought really any watch stuff. Yes. And I've even sold some watch stuff to help fund this channel. Yeah. But recently, I bought a new watch. Yep. And it was like kind of the, hey, you put a lot of time and effort and work into the channel, you know, treat yourself. <laughs> treat Is that what yourself. that was? It yeah. was a treat yourself? Well, it was my fun money. It's our yeah. budgeted fun money. Yeah. And I just chose for the first month in many months. To use it for yourself. I chose to use it on myself rather than on channel stuff. And I bought a Seiko. Good on you. So this is a Seiko Turtle. And I'll put some stuff on the screen, some pictures I took of this particular watch. But Seiko, if you're into the watch game at all, then you probably know about Seiko. If you're kind of just slightly interested in watches and maybe you've seen the Seiko counter at Macy's or something mm -hmm. like that, let me tell you, Seiko is an amazing brand. Their fit and finish for what you pay for the price is really second to none. Yeah. And I've had nicer watches. I kind of joke around and say that like Rolex is a, uh, a an expensive Seiko, <laughs> you know, okay. and, I've, and I've owned both. And they're both just really reliable, workhorse, rugged yep. style watches that you can rely on. You just don't have to worry about. You can wear them, you can beat them up, and they just keep on, they take a licking and keep on ticking. I thought that was Timex. Isn't that Energizer? No, I think it was Timex. No, okay. Well, anyways, Timex doesn't keep on ticking oh, okay. once the battery dies. But if you're into mechanical things at all, which I feel like a lot of people who are into whiskey are also into a lot of mechanical things, but check out Seiko. If you're a budding watch nerd, or if you haven't visited them in a while, and you don't care about any kind of brand recognition or the name on the dial, and you just want to get your hands on a watch that's really cool and that you can rely on, you can just simply go on Amazon and just search yeah. Seiko. What's the price point for Seikos? I mean, you can get into court Seikos for less than 50 bucks okay. or around 50, 60 dollars. But for a mechanical Seiko, you can look up like an SNK 809 or SNK 80 and just leave it blank and see the different colors that pop up. Okay. There's like a kind of an OD army green. There's a black, there's a cream dial. This is like more of a, like a smaller pilot style watch for hang on for people with smaller wrists. Or if you're more in the dive watch style and you want something big and chunky, or you just want something big and chunky and you don't care if it's a dive watch, check into the Seiko turtles, the SRP 777 or the 775 or the 773. If you like blue, he's just spouting off. Numbers. You can, you, yeah, I'm super nerd on this stuff. And then this is on just a NATO strap. So if you've never gone down the strap route. I have you, a question before yes. we talk about straps. Yes. To clarify. Yes. Quartz watch. Battery, battery operated. Battery operated. Mechanical watch. Non-battery operated. You have to wind it. You either have to wind it or it's an automatic mechanical watch where it has a rotor inside that spins as you move your wrist and it winds itself. Okay. I just wanted to clarify so, for people who may not be into watches that are valid. watching this. That's valid. And look, you don't even have to spend $110 on a Seiko SNK 809 if you want a smaller pilot style watch or 
350 or 400 dollars on a seiko turtle if you want a dive style watch you know you can spend a lot less than that you can get a casio f91w or a casio calculator watch i have a casio calculator I watch i absolutely love it. love it i mean i was a kid of the 80s mm -hmm. and i remember how cool it was to have a casio calculator watch and like think you're gonna get one over on the teacher on a math do, test like, math or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really just helped more for homework. Yeah. Cause like I never wanted to get caught <laughs> cheating on a test or anything like that. But you know, it was still fun yeah. and it was functional and you can pick these things up for dirt cheap. So there's a lot of different routes you can go in the watch world. I am really loving this thing. Yeah. I'm wearing the heck out of it. It's I'm in the, uh, the honeymoon phase as us watch nerds say. Yeah. But yeah, check out the description below for more details on watch stuff. And if you like it, get in get in on the watch game. Get it's, in it's on the watch a, game. It's a ton of fun. It will hamper your ability to spend money on whiskey, though, if you get too nerdy and too deep on it. And if you want to nerd out on whiskey and go deeper on that front, and you want to get more involved in the channel, you can check out our description below for our Patreon link. That's our community element. Mm -hmm. We've got score sheets, rubrics, database, nerd spreadsheet stuff that I put together. And we also have an online community there that we're new and growing and a budding online community. Yes. I mean, we didn't say that, but people are saying it. Everyone's saying I, it. Yeah, apparently. So it's a budding community <laughs> and you can check it out below as well. Also be sure to look down there for our next live stream date. We've got a lot of fun stuff coming up. We've got some change the world type charity stuff going mm -hmm. on. After that, we've got Aaron's birthday live stream. That's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to have some guests on in wow. upcoming live streams from the watch world. Mm -hmm. Little like watching whiskey crossover yeah, stuff. Man. It's going to be a lot of fun. So check down there for all that. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you are a bar cart pro, are you pro, if you're pro bar cart, leave a comment below. Yeah. Even if you're anti bar cart, that's fine. You do you. That's that works for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, feel free to subscribe. We post videos twice a week and we also do monthly live streams so you don't want to miss it. Hit the bell so you can be notified of all that stuff coming up. And until next week, guys. Cheers. cheers. And if you want to go deeper, er. <laughs> well, that got awkward fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I'm one a, for the bloopers. I'm a teenager. Yeah. Okay. All right.